Hey, it's Spoon Phillips out here at the Martin Museum for Maury's Music. We're here attached to C.F. Martin and Company and all of their wonderful guitars and ukuleles. And with me is Ramin Shayagan, who has been involved in designing a variety of instruments and knows an awful lot about almost everything Martin. So I want to turn it over to him to, to uh, start talking about this amazing new Streetmaster model. Well, you're too kind, Spoon. It's great to see you again, yeah, man. Welcome thank back. Thank you. Um, this is, a, this is a very cool new offering for, uh, for us out of Navajoa. What we have here is a Streetmaster package on a Junior. Now, um, we've been making these uh, cutaway triple O Juniors uh, for a few years now. It's a model that's very near and dear uh, to me personally. I think if you're going to have a, a sort of smaller, travel-sized, travel-friendly, I should say, a travel-friendly guitar, um, you shouldn't necessarily have to give up that um, fret access. So, always love the Cutaway Juniors, um, but we had never done one with a mahogany top, um, as opposed to the, the D Junior, which is available with the Sapili um, top on it. So, here we have not only the first um, Sapili top Cutaway Triple O Junior, uh, but also a Streetmaster finish on it. So, uh, it looks kind of rustic and, uh, and broken in a little bit. You're not going to worry too much about putting that first a uh, little bit of arm wear on it, but it's just a very attractive, nice little guitar, comes strung with the retro strings, and they just, uh, they give it a little bit of something extra. They're, it's kind of vibey, you know? Well, I think it's a very, it's got a very warm, mellow tone, particularly compared to the normal Triple uh, OC um, Junior that's got a spruce top and is, is, has more vibrant and brightness to it. This is a warmer version, and of course the Monel uh, alloy strings, the retro strings, uh, actually enhance that warmth quite a bit. The shorter scale is a 24 inch scale? Uh, yes, yeah, so, uh, so it's nominal 24 inch scale, so it's a little bit shorter even than a triple O or double O, um, uh, what you would typically see at uh, 24 9. And that lower um, scale length uh, results in lower string tension, a little bit easier to play for the folks with the smaller hands out there or for anyone who wants to uh, take a big bend and yeah, not have to rock and worry. rollers love these things because you can bend. You can get seriously big bends, higher than a step bend out of these things uh, with light strings. If you put on tens, you're going to go even more. Uh, it's, it, is, it is surprisingly effective in terms of playing up the neck. I was, you, you're afraid you're going to run into traffic jams up there and you really don't. You can do full chords, everything you can do in a normal triple O with a cutaway you can do on here. It's just everything's a little bit smaller to uh, make it a, like you said, it's an ideal travel guitar because it's a real guitar. Absolutely. We, we all know all kinds of travel guitars out on the market that are completely unsatisfying when it comes to tone and that's not the case with this guitar at all. That's why I think travel friendly is a, is a good way to think about it. It's, you know, is it a travel guitar? Yes. Um, but not only a travel guitar, it's, uh, it's a real guitar, you know. Uh, I've got a junior at home on the couch, I play it all the time. Um, and it is uh, constructed with all solid woods, with the exception of the um, eco-friendly rich light fingerboard and bridge, just to conserve a little bit of that ebony resource. And um, bearing in mind that this is an instrument that is going to hopefully go all sorts of places, um, it results in a little bit more rigidity in the neck, so slightly less uh, prone to needing action adjustments and yeah, things and, like that. Yeah, but still similar density in terms of the bridge, in terms mm -hmm. of the energy passing through the bridge is similar to ebony. And it's got um, bracing that's very similar to the traditional Martin bracing. It's got an X-brace and double tone bars that look, you know, when you go under there, it it's, doesn't look that different from uh, a traditional vintage Martin bracing. A very comfortable neck. Uh, I don't remember, is this the high... Um, it's a For, low oval and a high performance taper. Yeah, it's a yep. high performance taper and a modified low oval, so the same kind of neck you're going to get out of the guitars from Nazareth. What I like about the Street Masters is it's artistically done. It's not just, you know, supposed to be wear. It's not just supposed to be a patina that's wore out. They have these very subtle uh, etching around the end that give you the impression of binding where there is no binding, and I think that looks really nice. Uh, and in this case, it's, it, you still get to see the, the ribbon uh, of the Sapili back and sides, you know, right there. So, you, you know, it's not covering up the grain at all. So a beautiful piece of work. I would love to have one myself. And um, you can plug it in. Absolutely. And Fishman Electronics yep. on this guy. Yeah, yep. it's a v, um, 
MXT? Uh, MX, I believe. MX Electronics, yeah. so you got uh, volume may be, and tone uh, control maybe it's in a, here. Maybe it'd be a Sonicore type. Oh, um, I think it's a Sonicore. Yes, Sonicore, I've been seeing so many guitars today. So, uh, but yeah, you can plug it right in there, and so you can make it as loud as you want, even though it's a petite guitar. But this isn't the only ju junior that's coming out that I really have to tell you about. Oh, yeah. This is the D Junior bass, and this is a true, honest to goodness bass guitar. An acoustic bass guitar with acoustic bass guitar, uh, guitar tone. Everybody who's played one of these things has just been overwhelmed at how successful this model is. Um, probably the solid tone woods help that, but uh, just that I, I just couldn't, I was just, uh, flabbergasted at how much I like this guitar. They, yeah, um, a huge amount of credit to our R&D team uh, for bringing this idea forward and really helping us flesh this out. Um, we had been talking for some time about uh, a bass instrument, a short scale bass, and one day um, Josh Parker and our R&D team uh, took matters into his own hands. He says, we've been talking about this long enough, and he, uh, he took a D Junior, retrofitted it with some um, new bass hardware and uh, that was our first working prototype and we got to say um, the development that the strings team has put into this the R&D guys to come up with these special nylon core low tension strings has been magnificent um, we did uh, go ahead and expand um, the concept a little bit so we have this uh, same junior bass available in a triple O cutaway model as well uh, so if you want to play those uh, th those high notes, those high, those high low notes, um, you can uh, you can get up in the upper register as well. Um, but just a really effective acoustic bass. You can still play this, you know, at the campfire. You can still be heard if someone's playing a full size guitar, um, and you can plug it in and play it on stage. And it's um, it avoids that that problem with bass instruments, which is uh, the shorter scale length you go, the more sort of uh, floppy, um, the strings sound. Um, you have to maintain a certain level of tension in order to, to produce the tone, um, but you also want it to be pleasant to play. And so I think we've really struck a perfect balance with this instrument. Um, really, really excited to bring this to market. Very yeah. happy. And again, there, you know, there, people have tried to do this in various designs out there around the world, and I've never played one yet that was remotely satisfying and this is extremely satisfying and when you record with it it sounds more like an upright bass than not really to my ear um, when you plug it in um, if you plug it in direct like anything you plug in direct you're just going to have to deal with the direct plug-in sound but you put this through an amp again you can make it as, sound as big as you want and uh, really easy to play uh, easy fingering um, same sort of uh, pl plug and play uh, technology and the electronics. They put on real bass tuners, which I like. That you, you know, that was cool. a, that was the subject of some debate internally. We tried a, so many different tuners, and um, we we even tried some that were like small button tuners. And we thought, okay, does it you know does that detract from the from the visual effect of being able to look at this instrument from across the room and say, ah, you know what, that's a bass. And we thought that the only way to really get there and to have not only a fabulous, effective um, tuner, these are, uh, I believe they're Godot tuners, um, was to use the, the full-size bass buttons. So, you know, a lot of other travel basses or smaller basses, they may use the, the smaller buttons. We've decided in this case that we wanted to really give the bass players what they deserve, which is that big chunky thing you can grab a hold yeah. of. And you have mentioned before about juniors, about how, for people with smaller hands, what I see this really working for is for people who want to practice at home, take it on the road, practice, you know, be able to play it in their hotel room without needing an amp, but also for home recording artists, people who are guitarists that wish they just had a bass because this tune would sound better with a bass, but they don't have a big bass and they don't have a bass amp and they don't have, you know, all the stuff, the, the uh, plug it in gear that, to uh, overcome direct plugging in. And this, you put a microphone in this, and you have a bass to, to record your bass parts on your home recording music. I think it's a brilliant, brilliant concept we, and wonderfully executed. We love it. And I got to say, so I drive a, a Jeep Wrangler. It's a small one, you know, two doors, and have uh, once wrestled an upright bass into that thing. And it was a nightmare. <laughs> and then I thought, okay, well, it'd probably be easier to stick a P bass in there, you know, or some, you know, some sort of traditional electric bass. Also, a nightmare. They're really big. They're longer <laughs> than you think. And, uh, and I think, you know, for the sake of being able to, to jet around town um, with 
everything you need uh, to lay it down the low end. This really accomplishes it in a way that, you know, it sounds good, it feels good, and they look very pretty as well. Yeah, I honestly think these are gonna sell really well once they're out there, because uh, once you get it in your hands, then you're like, wow, this sounds so much better than I ever thought it was gonna sound, because it doesn't, because it looks small, and it's got a small neck, but they really pull it off. Um, so congratulations. Thank you, you and it, it is unusual for us to launch a strings product at the same time as a guitar product that is sort of tied together, they're a, you know, they're a conjoined um, project. Uh, but just want to say that the, the strings that go with this instrument, they should be available right around the same time, uh, in the same places. And so um, if you pick one up and you love it and you think, man, I'm going to be shredding on this thing for a while, uh, pick, up your, pick, up, pick yourself up a set of strings to go along with it so that, um, so that you'll be set for many months. So check both of these guitars out and the videos of Maury's Music. Uh, you'll see uh, me, Spoon Phillips, and Maury playing these, guitar, uh, these two guitars uh, sometimes together. We actually have been jamming on the two of them and having a wonderful time. So, right on. So, and and the, you, the price point, you just can't beat them. You know, I'm just, again, so impressed what you get. Um, well, what we have here is, uh, is a very special uke. Um, this is, it may look like an ordinary uh, mahogany soprano uke, but it is so much more than that. Um, this is sinker mahogany. Um, of some uh, great repute. Um, I'm sure you've, you've uh, played many of our Sinker Mahogany instruments over the years. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with Sinker Mahogany, uh, essentially what these are are logs that have sank into um, a river in Belize due to their density. Some of them have been laying at the bottom of this river for 150 years, some of them even, perhaps even longer. Uh, and there's a, there's a very healthy operation of dredging. Um, where they go in and they reclaim these, um, these logs, they reclaim this lumber, and the unique qualities of this stuff uh, really let, um, makes this material lend itself to fabulous musical instruments. It just sounds so good. So what we have here, a very traditional looking soprano ukulele, um, sinker mahogany back and sides, and uh, top back and sides, I should say, rosewood, fingerboard, and bridge. Um, very traditional. We are the oldest surviving ukulele manufacturer in the world here at Martin. We're very proud of that. Uh, we don't make a ton of them, but the ones that we make, we take very seriously. And, um, and we love the ukulele. It has a very special place, not only in our hearts, but uh, Chris Martin as well. He feels very strongly about ukulele uh, manufacture and that um, someone grabs a Martin uke, it should be a contender for best in class at any price point. So we have these uh, very cool tuners. Uh, they have a uh, planetary gear, they're, they're called ratio tuners, and so they may look like kind of like a friction peg on the top, um, but they're not. They're actually a geared tuner, uh, very stable. We have our uh, Martin strings here. I think they're, they're uh, Magnifico strings or um, fluorocarbon type um, strings. They're really um, excellent. They pair very nicely with the uke, and uh, very proud of this thing. Blacked out, uh, nut and saddle. Very low key, subdued kind of look, but you know, the jumping flea. So uh, that's what they call the ukulele in, uh, in certain circles. So um, hopefully any ukulele enthusiasts out there will get their, uh, get their chance to try one of these things. That's right, Martin was building ukuleles from the early 20th century. They were the first major musical manufacturer in the, in the continental United States to embrace uh, Hawaiian music. And uh, we're a big champion of uh, Hawaiian music artists. This mahogany predates that, and we don't know, because some of this uh, mahogany that was taken out of the river, the actual trees were like 300 years old. That's not saying that the ones that they're using on this particular batch of ukuleles is that, but they certainly have been soaking up a mineral content mm -hmm. that is not found, not only on any sinker uh, mahogany, but any sinker mahogany, only the sinker mahogany that came out of that river has these particular uh, tonal properties that come from that enhanced uh, mineral content. And yes, so it looks very much like a traditional Martin. It's got a 1930s kind of logo. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't have had the logo pre-1930, but otherwise it looks like an early Martin ukulele, and except these, t you know, these are very precise tuning uh, machines. So it's, uh, it's uh, ease to tune and keep in tune. Yep, the f it's a really great balance between the traditional look on the front of a friction peg and the modern um, stability that we've come to expect uh, and that the ukulele deserves. You know, it's, it's in some ways, it's almost like it's been left behind uh, by a lot of the hardware manufacturers, but not so uh, in this case. We, we, we love ukuleles and we like this one especially. So, well, I'm gonna trade this out for a, another extremely impressive soprano uke. 
that I love a lot. As many people know, the acacia species called koa wood only comes from the Hawaiian Islands. Uh, ukulele, of course, is a Polynesian Hawaiian word. And this is one beautiful koa uh -huh. wood <laughs> ukulele. Yes, um, we have a uh, soprano ukulele, uh, all in solid koa. Actually, some nice figure on these pieces as well. Um, the side, which is, of course, the part of the instrument that you look at the most while you're playing it, very attractive. Um, a, again, a very traditional, um, very traditional ukulele. This is out of our uh, facility in Navajoa, Sonora, Mexico. Um, those folks, really fabulous craftsmen and craftswomen. They do a great job. Once again, our um, planetary tuners here uh, from Ratio, they, um, they just plain work and they look great, they feel great. And you know, koa um, as, a, as a material for ukulele construction goes back all the way to the very, very beginning. And you really, you'll only find uh, mahogany ukes and koa ukes. Um, I find that the koa ukes may be a little bit louder um, and the mahogany ukes may be a little bit warmer um, in general. But uh, really the only way to figure out what you like the best is to go try them out, um, see which one appeals to you the most. Uh, we have our raised gold foil um, decal here on the top, all satin finish. And it's just a clean, uh, a really clean look really lightweight. You, you know, that's the thing that's so nice about these instruments. You can play them for hours and hours and hours, um, and they're never going to sag on your shoulder, you know, like that, um, like that boat anchor electric guitar that you, <laughs> you know, that, that you love, but you just can't play it for a four-hour gig. This thing, uh, an endless well of creativity. I don't know if you can pick this up with the mic or not, but mahogany, you can get a, a sustain out of the mid-range, like a hum. This... This really brings the soprano mm -hmm. out, and you get these layered, just like a uh, just like a koa guitar. When you get those layers of overtones, you can hear multiple overtones coming out of this. So a little brighter sound doesn't quite have that the oomph at the bottom end, but still absolutely beautiful piece of work. And we have a third ukulele that's coming out. That's a lot of fun. This is like Christmas morning with all these packages here. And when I say fun, I mean it's a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. So um, this is a project that uh, um, our ukulele czar here in-house, Mr. Michael George, was really um, diligent and, uh, you know, worked closely collaborating with the folks over at Life is Good to bring this, uh, bring this to life. And um, Life is Good, you know, they're sort of a lifestyle uh, brand. They do clothing, they do um, equipment, all sorts of cool stuff. And the message is really what resonates with us. Uh, which is to, to be positive, to enjoy, um, enjoy whatever it is that you're getting into in the given moment um, and try to have a good time. And um, we are so down with that philosophy here at Martin. We love it. Um, so here you have the Life is Good Soprano Ukulele. And it has a variety of Life is Good stickers, the types you may see on uh, cars when you go to the national park and you're hanging out with other like-minded folks. Um, and they're, they're really arranged in a very attractive kind of way on here. But again, fun, fun is the message. Um, so this uke, HPL, high pressure laminate, top, back, and sides. The, um, the back and sides have a beautiful uh, koa pattern. Um, uh, my colleague, Mr. Tim Teal, and I actually went through hundreds of sets of koa um, here in, in our uh, acclimating room to find the best sets that could be replicated for, uh, for some of these HPL patterns. So uh, really beautiful. They just look fabulous. Very stable neck. Uh, and I think on an instrument like this, which is meant for fun, uh, maybe meant for the younger folks, possibly, um, or something that you are planning to throw in the throw in the car as you go on your camping trip or take it wherever. Um, that stability is really critical. Uh, something that's not going to be hypersensitive to changes in the environment. Something that's not going to split or crack necessarily if you spend a weekend out in the desert or if you're going out to Washington State and you're in the you know the rainforest. Basically, uh, the ukulele is going to be right at home in any of those places, and it's going to be less likely to um, to have issues or require you know, maintenance, uh, a preventative maintenance or anything like that because it has this uh, laminated neck as well. Extremely strong stuff. I mean, it's built tough. Um, it's a really, really cool ukulele. The color pops and we think that in, in many ways, this is what the spirit of the ukulele is all about. It's about fun, it's about going out, uh, having a good time, exploring the world around you and remembering that life is good.
Yes, indeed. And it's got a very pretty sound uh, tone that you can hear on the uh, example videos at marismusic.com. And that'll be online um, by the time you see this, uh, once the NAMM show uh, releases them officially. So, again, thank you very much for everything. Oh, Spoon, it's always a pleasure, yeah, man. Great to fun. see you. It's always fun with this guy. So, and if you've never checked out this guy's music, find <laughs> him online. Oh. A wonderful guitar player. Uh, so, yeah, and uh, life is good. See you guys.